In case you haven't heard, we have some really great merch available over on podswag.com, your one-stop shop for clothing, accessories, and novelty items from all your favorite podcasts, including Spontaneous Nation. Recently, we came out with these one-of-a-kind Spontaneous Nation logo socks. They have the Season 3 Adam logo, available in two bold colors, purple and yellow. They are perfect to pair with your casual wear or for jazzing up more formal attire. Wear them to a summer wedding and be the best-dressed guest around! Go see for yourself at podswag.com slash PFT. That is P-O-D-S-W-A-G dot com slash PFT. Use the code SPONT25 for 25% off the Spontaneous Nation collection from July 23rd to July 31st. Welcome, my friends. Near and far. High and low. Big and small. Red and blue? Living and dead. That's right. I think I covered everybody. This is an inclusive show. So you don't have to be alive to listen to it. You could either be a ghost with unfinished business, forever haunting the place where you died, or someone up in heaven. It's nice to think that if you go to heaven, you get to listen to fun podcasts. Of course, that opens up the possibility that people in hell are listening to this podcast, which is disappointing. Obviously, I'm disappointed in people for earning a place in hell. Not great, guys. But also disappointed that my podcast is being used as a punishment in hell. That stings. I think it was, you know, I know, look, it's an acquired taste. It's not a punishment in hell. That's extreme. There's a lot of things I don't like, but I wouldn't say they should show this to the damned. They should show this to murderers as a punishment for squandering the gift of life. I, I hope that in hell, the punishments have stayed current with the times <laughs> and all the latest technologies. Here's a hell. What if you have to watch those commercials for 76 gas with the couple that's on the road trip? Their crumbling marriage. That's a hell on earth because... During a, during a baseball game, I'll see those commercials over and over and over and over again. No variation. Folks, in the interest of transparency, someone just snuck in here. <laughs> grabbed a backpack, I hope it's his, and left the room. He thought he was going to make it out without me commenting on it, but he was wrong. No one escapes my notice. Not even the people in hell. That's right. Listen to this podcast. <laughs> you shouldn't have murdered those people. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to join me in a free form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me in a narrative improv that is one continuous story as opposed to unconnected scenes based on a location provided by our special guest and oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from our conversation. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. My guest today is a writer, a speaker, a professor, the author of Bad Feminist, among other works. Please welcome to Spontaneous Nation, Roxanne Gay. Roxanne, hello. Hello, Paul. Thanks How are, for having me. <laughs> thank you for being here. Uh, now, this is not your first trip to the Earwolf Studios. No, I was just here 
two weeks ago. That's right. With my friend Cameron Esposito. Yes, indeed. You did her query show. I did. And we were coincidentally outside making too much noise. Yes, and you were. Cameron came out and shushed us. Yes, she did. It was delightful. So <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way about it. <laughs> and not that well, this it didn't is... bother me. I couldn't, actually, I couldn't really hear it, but... She's very effective at the shushing. She real we shushed right away. I know. Whoa. You guys are also very good at obeying. <laughs> it's Always true. a good quality in a man. Right. <laughs> Roxanne, I have a question for you for my previous episode's guest. Mm-hmm. And that question is if you were born the opposite sex, what would your name, personality, and occupation be? I would be president. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my name would be hmm, Michael. Oh, very nice. Mm-hmm. And my personality would be the same. <laughs> right. Excellent. <laughs> it would just be excellent. Is president a thing that you have aspired to be? No. Not at all. <laughs> I just feel like with a dick between my legs, I <laughs> run the world. That's all. <laughs> What other jobs did you consider before you landed on your current job? Every other job. When, when you were little, was it your... No, actually, I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do when I said I would. Like, I grew up and became what I wanted to become. From how, how old were you when you realized this is what you wanted to do? Four. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is your earliest memory from those days of, of knowing that you wanted to... To be who you are. I just knew I wanted to be a writer. Mm-hmm. And I would look at books and think, I want to make one of these. And it turns out it's not that hard. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's very hard. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> the dirty little secret of writing is very easy. It's so easy. <laughs> I could do it in my sleep. <laughs> um, what were the books that you uh, that influenced you when you were a kid? What did you love to read? Little House on the Prairie. Yeah, how, that's a lot of books, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a big series. Seven uh, ooh, ish, <laughs> give or take. Ooh, sorry. And where did you grow up? Omaha, Nebraska. So, so it was a little. Yeah, okay. I was, uh, yeah, I lived in a little house on the prairie. <laughs> it was just like Laura Ingalls and I were basically twins. What was it, what was it about those books that grabbed you? Um. I love this idea that you could just be an ordinary girl on the plains and still have an interesting life. Mm -hmm. And as an ordinary girl on the plains, I wanted an interesting life. And so, and also just the details. It was just delicious. I loved it. (laughs) What were the, what were your favorite adventures that, that they had on that prairie? Oh, I loved when they made candy from snow and maple syrup. (laughs) Big, good times. Also, I loved that Almanzo would pick Laura up in his sleigh. On the, in the winter, and, like, that's how he courted her. It was right. very romantic. And I think a lot happened under the blankets. And so <laughs> now, anytime I see a blanket, I'm like, yeah, good times. Are there allusions to to sex in these books? No, none. But <laughs> but did you fill in those blanks yourself? I sure did. <laughs> you know, I look, I was a writer even then. Did I, you? <laughs> making the story what it should have been. <laughs> Did you try to make the uh, the snow candy? I did. I took some How could Aunt you Jemima. not, right? I mean, yeah. honestly, I took some Aunt Jemima and <laughs> went out to the snow and we got down. <laughs> and it just tasted like syrup snow, but whatever. <laughs> Details. Were there, were there any other steps to it? Or no, was it just pouring syrup I on snow? I literally just took Aunt Jemima. I just like swirled her through the snow. <laughs> and I tried to make like, you know, a swirl because I was like, oh, candy is pretty. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I wasn't that great as a kid. <laughs> what was your first piece of published uh, writing? Oh, God. It, it was, it was a, a tragic little essay in a magazine called Moxie Magazine. And Moxie? Ma- what was Moxie Magazine? It was a magazine about girls with Moxie. Or young women, I should say. And so I wrote this essay about inhabiting multiple identities and like, where do I belong? And I'm, I, you know, I'm a Nebraskan and nobody's ever going to understand me. And I'm Haitian in the United States and black Americans don't understand me. I mean, like, it's mortifying. It's just like, girl, why? Like, if I could go back and talk to her, like, mm, pull it together. Tighten up. <laughs> Is that, do you... Can you have compassion for your younger self? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'm not ashamed of anything I wrote, but right. I do look at her at 23 or so and just think, mm, mm, yeah, mm, 
you have so much work to do. I, f- I find that to be a very difficult thing to be generous to my younger self, um, which you you have to be because you're doing the best you can at the time. Absolutely. And you didn't know things that you know now. It's very unfair to, to be judgmental of that younger person. But it's I tend to to be very cringy about stuff like that. Is that the same for you or did you learn to? Uh, yeah, I, I – um, it's different for me. Like I have a lot of compassion for my younger self mm-hmm. because again, like I only knew what I knew at the time Yeah. and thank God the internet existed, but it wasn't like this. And so <laughs> all of my shame is gone <laughs> and that's nice. And so there's not a lot for me to worry about. I, I, I you know, I look at that writing and I can still see the competence. Mm-hmm. Like I knew how to string sentences together. I just didn't know how to think well. Right. And You know, bless her heart. She had a lot going on. Absolutely. (laughs) Did you um uh, did you write anything akin to Little House of the Prairie at any point? Oh, I'm sure I did. (laughs) Yeah. In fact, all of my early work was I would draw villages Mm -hmm. and on napkins, of course, as one does, and then I would write stories about the people living in those villages. How how big of a population do these villages have? Oh, like seven people. <laughs> <laughs> Very self-sustaining. Right. <laughs> did they all interact? They did. And, like, there was always a cemetery, and there was always, like, one body buried in the cemetery. I would just draw, like, one single cross on a big hill. <laughs> I don't know. I was an odd child. Was it when with each drawing was it the same person that was buried in the cemetery every time? No, no, I rotated. <laughs> right, like who got to die? But right. oftentimes it was a child, <laughs> probably my brother. Did you do? You, did you not get along when you were younger? We fought like cats. Well, n- we got along until the third brother came along. Right, and then it was all. Like, uh, I think we were basically just fighting for his affection. <laughs> for the little brother's affection. Yeah, we love him. He's like our favorite. <laughs> to this day. Oh, yeah. He's, we call him the baby. He's 35. Yeah, absolutely. That never goes away. No, 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 no. Um, where, when did you move from Nebraska? Well, we, my dad's company was headquartered in Omaha, and so we would go back and forth between wherever a new site was. He's an engineer. He builds tunnels. Mm-hmm. And so he, we would go, and he would build a tunnel, and then we would move back. So – all over. I moved a lot. What was your What was your uh, your understanding of his job when you were little? I he is an engineer, so he explained his job to us in great detail at all times. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I understand it. I understood it really well. Was it Was it cool to you when you were a kid? Or it did, was. Okay. It was really from cool the get go because he would give us hard hats and take us to construction oh, sites, and it's like yes. we would go in those weird, scary elevators and right. go down underground and we would be like 500 feet underground. It was awesome. <laughs> Did you get to play on construction equipment? Oh yeah. Oh. It was awesome. We, when I was a kid, they were tearing up my street at one point and they left the, the, um, the, the machines there overnight. And that was a huge deal for that summer to, to get into that. I think it was like a backhoe and to get in there and you could move the, um, the instruments very slightly Mm -hmm. like you can we can turn on obviously but there were certain levers that if you pulled them it would make thing make the thing move just a little bit and it was very very exciting so i can only imagine it having it being sanctioned uh i mean we weren't really allowed to touch anything but we would get to so you know sadly (laughs) missed opportunity but we did get to sit in them and like they were just so big Mm -hmm. and it was it was nice. And going underground, there was no claustrophobia or anything. No, turns out that's not one of my issues. Right. So, <laughs> many other things, but not that. Heights? No. Okay, that's a good one. No, I'm, I'm only afraid of bugs. Oh. And dogs. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bugs for me, I I I've talked about this before. I am not a fan, but I am the person. In my household, was responsible for the bugs. Are you that person? No, I am not. No, no, no. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Is the, is the like, bug? I'll per- be the breadwinner. Right. I will do all kinds of things. I will wear the pants, but I will not kill a bug. I am a little bitch when it comes to bugs. I'm just like. Mm-hmm. Is the bug person in your household good at that job? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I'm. I just. I don't do bugs. Like, I split my time between here and Indiana, and sometimes when I'm in Indiana and I'm alone. I will, like, call a friend. I will throw a book at the ceiling to get it. I have invented tools for bug disposal. I, 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 
<laughs> the the non bug person in my household has the fear of even with a magazine like sh- like sort of sort of swatting the bug away. Mm-hmm. That the bug will then run up the magazine and see. Then... That's what I'm afraid of. Like, there's so much <laughs> that could feeling. happen, and like, I, I use like a so, broom. What so if it like crawls happen. into the things? The right. broom, the bristles. Yeah, yeah thank you. Then, then it's just in the there. The broom things, <laughs> and then like run up the broom pole into my hand, into my body, sure. and then it'll be like Wrath of Khan. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, we all we all know how that turned out. Yep. Um, the <laughs> the original Wrath of Khan. Right, that's right. <sighs> I have to cover my. I have to protect my ear now. <laughs> like, oh, in uh, in your household, is are the bugs disposed of uh, humanely or just squashed? Squashed. Okay. I'm not interested in any sort any sort of mumbo jumbo about <laughs> life and the sanctity thereof. <laughs> Fuck you. How do you feel Kill about it. how how do you feel about lightning bugs, fireflies? Uh, from a distance, mm-hmm. all things are majestic. Right. <laughs> I do enjoy killing a lightning bug, though, or a firefly, because then you can see the streak of neon at night. Right. I'm from the Midwest. So sure. No, I understand. That part is. We had them growing up, and it was the same. It was it was the same thing. It was fascinating, but it always I always felt guilty after I did. Yeah, it. I don't. <laughs> I don't because there's enough. Like if it was an endangered there's thing, enough. I might feel sad about it. But <laughs> there is no shortage of whatever the fuck they right. are. Like at all. Like there's a my apartment in Indiana has a. a problem with uh, ladybugs mm-hmm. and so i've <laughs> it's so embarrassing but i have if you come to my house you're gonna be like mm. i taped the door all around because they were coming in somehow through the crack in the door they're so, so little yeah it yeah. looks like a crazy person's house because i the doors are all just taped <laughs> i was i was gonna ask you about ladybugs and mm-hmm. and i think that's you raise a good point because i feel like one ladybug is it's very cute, cute mm-hmm. but a bunch of them then it's just bugs that's just an infestation <laughs> yeah absolutely it's an army and like one ladybug is like, oh, sweet. But right. like a bunch of ladybugs, anything could happen. Yeah. Who knows what they're plotting? And so <laughs> I'm prepared at all times to end them. If if a ladybug. I vacuum them now. <laughs> I use my um, bus, dust buster. Dust buster, sure. It's the best because it has an extra long so I can be away from it. Right, right, right. And I like protect all my crevices. <laughs> and then I just go. And so then I wrap the opening of the dust buster in saran wrap so mm-hmm. they have no oxygen. <laughs> and also so they don't escape. It's, it's just sad. This but took a it's turn. Important. It did. <laughs> it did. I'm not well. Um, dogs, did you, uh, was that a fear growing up? Yes. From an early age? When I was like five, a dog named Targa in our mm-hmm. backyard well, he lived in the house behind us. He jumped over the fence and bit me on the ass. There you go. Yeah. That'll do it. It will. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> he was a big German shepherd. He was massive. I mean, I think he was massive. Looking back now, I'm sure, like, he was tiny. But <laughs> back then, I was like, oh, my God, this horse is trying to eat me. Thru- <laughs> Throughout your life, have there been any dogs that you have been cool with? No. Nope. And I'm sure people assure you all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, he's sweet. Yeah. Like, you know. My person has a, a dog, mm-hmm. um, and that dog stays in in in, in their space. Right. Um, I, I'm not into dogs. I, I I will never be into dogs. Right. <laughs> Look, <laughs> fair, enough, <laughs> fair enough. I guess I got a little. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Because <laughs> like white people in particular seem to enjoy like mouth to mouth contact with yes, dogs. Yes, that's right. Just thinking about it makes me very that's upset. Right. That's yeah. right. It just it's just like <laughs> that's right. That's the thing. That I, I don't have dogs. It's a thing that I never thought about until that was pointed out to me. Well, it was not pointed out to me. It was pointed out to someone else, and I was overhearing this. Yes. And I was like, yes, that is gross. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's disgusting. Like, what do you like, – do you know where the – I mean, it licks its own ass. Uh, yeah. It, it sniffs shit. With great frequency. Yeah. Like, yeah. why are you putting your mouth on its <laughs> mouth? Like, anytime I see a white person do that, and I've never seen a black person do it no. or any person of ethnicity. <laughs> Uh, but when I see a white person do it, I'm just like, mm-hmm. that's why y'all get weird diseases. <laughs> <laughs> Roxanne Gay, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> um, it is July as people are hearing this. Um, let me get the exact date for you. I do apologize. Uh, it is July 23rd as people are hearing this. Is there anything uh, in particular you'd like to promote or that people should be aware of? Um, sure. I have an anthology that came out in May called Not That Bad. 
that I edited, and it's a, a cheerful look at rape culture. It's not cheerful. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really depressing but important book about rape culture from 29 writers, um, examining different aspects of it, and then the paperback of my last nonfiction book, Hunger. There we go. And where can people uh, find you online should they wish to find you and should you wish to be found? Uh, should I wish to be found? RoxanneGay.com and rgay on Twitter. And that's one N in Roxanne. One N. R-O-X-A-N-E. It's it, nice and tidy. She's making it simple for you. I really am. <laughs> I mean, come on. I only have nine letters in my whole name. <laughs> that's it's so you're, great. You're, that's very generous. I think you're I leaving feel, a lot for everyone else. I really am. <laughs> like, there are 17 other letters for you to enjoy. There you're you welcome. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break. Uh, during the break, you will listen to the ad. Stay alive. No matter what occurs, I will find you. Hey, did you know this? This is a little trivia. A quality night's sleep helps you recover from distractions faster, prevent burnout, make better decisions, improve your memory, and overall make fewer mistakes. It's my favorite piece of trivia. And uh, it's not marketing. It's science. So shut up with your it's marketing nonsense. To design a better, I'm sorry, I just get mad when people say things are marketing that are clearly science. To design a better mattress, Lisa leveraged 30 plus years of experience and hundreds of hours of testing to develop the perfect mattress for all body shapes and sleeping styles. I am a very stylish sleeper and Lisa knows that. Lisa's mission is to provide a better night's sleep for everybody, including me and including you. Through their <laughs> one tent program, they donate one mattress for every 10 they sell. That's more than 26,000 mattresses and counting. That's nice. Thank you, Lisa. And Lisa strives to leave the world better than they found it, but that doesn't stop with mattress donations. Together with the Arbor Day Foundation, Lisa plants one tree for every mattress they sell, and they are committed to planting one million trees by 2025. That's a lot of trees over a lot of years. This is the call to action that I'm required, nay, honored to bestow upon you. Don't miss these summer savings. Get $160 off a Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash PFT. That is L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT for $160 off. Lisa, a better way to sleep. <laughs> no, please don't go. I thought I was Welcome back, everybody. That's right, Gary. I let them. I let you talk, and we were back in the thing. Oh boy, here we go. I'm naughty sometimes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It is time to meet our friends from the land of make pretends. Seated right next to me, <laughs> Ego Wodum is back. Hello, Ego. How Hi. are you doing? Good, good. I'm doing good. I just got self-conscious for two seconds. Doesn't happen often. Is it because um, I yelled your name? <laughs> no, because I had vocal fry, and I think about how people comment, give women shit about that. It's true. Um, but listen, I have allergies. It bees like that sometimes. Claritin's not doing the trick, neither is Zyrtec. So what, what are you allergic to? Oh, so I got an allergy test last year, um, and trees and grass. That's oh. no food. I'm lactose intolerant, but that's a, just different than allergy. Yes. I don't know. Um, but uh, trees and grass. They're yeah. all over the place, though. Yeah, so that means I'm going to die any day now, um, <laughs> is what I gather. I paid a lot of money for this allergy test to then get... Uh, <laughs> I went because I had post-nasal drip, mm -hmm. and I was like, let me get this sorted out. It's been some time since I've had many years. Um, so I was like, let me get it sorted out. Got an allergy test done. Uh, I don't know. This doctor convinced me to do that, and it's like a, it's fun. It's very expensive. When the bill comes, it doesn't seem worth it after the fact. Um, I had not, not heard it, that before. It was. I mean, it was silly because I'm allergic to trees and grass. What are we right. going to do about that, right? Um, and she's like, now you got to come once a week and get an allergy shot. Um, and that'll help you out. And I was like, see, she never saw me again. And I paid I paid for that allergy <laughs> test. Uh, and I'm never going back to the doctor. So that's where we're, I'm good, though. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good to Did answer you, your question. Was this was this a <laughs> thing that you have had since childhood, do you think? Or is this a recent The thing? trees and grass? Yeah. Uh, probably. I mean, I think when I moved to California, my allergies just, I got allergies. I never had allergies mm -hmm. before. And then when I came to California, I had problems breathing and mm -hmm. which you're, I mean, closer to the ocean. I figure people assume you're not going to have 
problems breathing. By I guess the ocean. you gotta get right up on that ocean. I gotta get live on the water. Yeah. I just came back from Hawaii. I want to. They know how to relax, guys. Mm-hmm. I just wanna let they know how to relax in Hawaii. Yes, they do. I could take a page out of their book because I am way too on edge <laughs> at, all, <laughs> at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Way too turned. I'm from the East Coast. It's yeah. It's I'm, and it's it's very different. I was like, this is wild. So our Uber driver told us that if people, if someone in the middle of traffic parked in the middle of the street, no one would honk at them. Like mm-hmm. if they just parked and just decided to be there in the one lane, no right. one would honk. Everyone would just patiently wait. I was like, what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I mean, no. Yeah, I can pretend to be patient for about. 45 seconds. <laughs> I'd play. I'd pretend. I, but I learned a lot there. I learned a lot. I learned, I learned, I learned that pe- there's people who know how to relax. I'm not one. Sure. So. Where, where in Hawaii were you? Um, on the uh, We were on the big island, but on the other side. So the volcano is on one side. We were on the, the chill side. I got you. Um, looked like. Oh, this to me. It looked like Key West, Florida. When we, so we were in, uh, we were. This is mean, but we were in, uh, we were in Honolulu. I was like, yes, vacation. We're in a different place. And then when we got to the Big Island and we were in Kona, my friend and I were like, this looks like Florida. It's like, Everybody here looks like this is Florida. <laughs> Why did we come here? Uh, we feel like we're in Florida. The, uh, the these people look like Floridians. Um, but anyway, it was nice. It was nice to get away. It's very cheap flight, guys. There you go. Word to the wise. Yeah. Ego, I'm going to look away from you to look directly across from you. Kitty corner for me. Meow. Uh, hi. <laughs> kitty, kitty in the corner. Hi. He's back. Oh. And he is still oh. Gary Anthony Wise. Oh, my gosh. I've been to Hawaii. I went, <laughs> I, I have been there. Uh, we have a lot in common. I've been to Hawaii. I've sure. been co- to Kauai. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to. Chickens at the airport. The chickens at the airport. Mm-hmm. And ch- tree chickens they have there. They have mm-hmm. tree chickens there. Uh, I, and like you, I also uh, am an allergy sufferer. Mm. Uh, but Gary. unlike you, I did the shots at one point. What are you your allergies? The, how are the shots? Okay, uh, what are your allergies? We have a lot of questions shots? for yes. you. I'm Guys, sorry. I have nothing but answers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of money. I am very well. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, the uh, I did the shots for two years. Okay. And at that t- point, I was able to go off all medication until one bad allergy season. Mm. They came back uh Horribly, and then I had to, and nothing worked anymore. Gary, got to know what are those allergies? Uh, I also am the only the only blooming things I'm not allergic to is something called pigweed and bluegrass. Pigweed. Those are the only two things, and that is why I am a I'm a vegan, not because I love plants, but I want to eat everything. That's right. That could hurt me. Teach him a lesson. Oh. <laughs> so I, I'm out to eat all plants. So ingesting plants, no problem. No, I could I could probably eat a handful of poison ivy right now if you had it in front of me. <laughs> I beg of you not to do that. Gary. I might do it. Gary, please. I swear to God, I'll do it. Gary, what about the Bloomin' Onion at uh, TGI Friday? Oh, you brought up an old family favorite. <laughs> uh, I used to wear, I, I, I had one pair of cargo pants just so I could carry Blooming o- Onion. <laughs> At any time of the day, you catch me with seven different blooming onions in each pocket. Oh, my God. Oh, Christ in heaven. Which he is. There's only six pockets, so now I'm trying to... Oh, you, you, you're a six-pocket cargo. I'm a, I'm a seven-pocket cargo pants He guy. did say he has a lot of money. I, okay, I true. You had bespoke money. cargo shorts yes, with a seventh pocket. Yeah, the seventh pocket. <laughs> Gary, I'm going to look away from you. Understood. To look right next to you, across from me... What? Mr. Hastings. Sorry, he's not here. <laughs> Instead, we got Maria Blasucci. Hey, Paul. Welcome back, Maria. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Allergies? Let's get it out there. Uh, yeah, I guess I got them. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> I, I, guess got I got them. What are you allergic to? Well, I don't know. Sometimes, uh, my <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes my skin itches when I sit on grass. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I guess <laughs> I don't know. I get headaches. Uh, I don't know how to answer oh, wow. this. I, I think I, I might have allergies, but not. I, I don't think I need shots. But you haven't you haven't been tested for allergies. No. Okay. So it's never been severe enough that you thought I have to go see what this is all about. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
Anything else you want to know? Yeah, I have a few questions. (laughs) Have you ever been to Hawaii? Yes, I have. Where have you been? Uh, I've been multiple uh, places. I've been to uh, Kauai, which is my favorite. Did you see the chickens at the airport? I didn't. I don't remember seeing seeing them at the airport, but I remember seeing them at the pool. Okay. And um, the Princeville area. Yes. Of, I mean, it was just, that's my favorite place. Beautiful. I think it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I went to the Big Island. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a huge fan. I remember driving mm-hmm. to the, that volcano, going up there and just being like, you know what? It's not worth it. Yeah, the Big Island is kind of lame, I think. I yeah, think well, I, and I don't like Honolulu all that much because that seems like a city to me. Mm-hmm. But then Maui, I love. Mm. Never been to Maui. I haven't been to Wow. I wanted Wowie. to go to Maui. Here, here it's great. <laughs> I wanted to it's go to Maui. It's really nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Speaking of Maui, Wowie, are you a fan of Sammy Hagar? Uh, no. I don't I don't know. You don't know? No. You'd know it if you were. Say, say I can't drive 55? I don't know what you're saying. Three lock box? I There's... guess I'm too young to know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just too young uh, to understand uh, all uh, words. Uh, <laughs> words don't make I sense. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just a millennial. Maria, have you ever been to the hospital? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Overnight stay? Um, not yet, but I feel <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, no, no, I haven't been to the. But uh, speaking of dog bites, I was bit by a dog and had to go to the hospital to get a tetanus shot. When did this happen? When I was in, I think, sixth or seventh grade, I was at my friend Amanda's house, not Amanda Lund, uh, and another Amanda, and they had a dog that was, um, well, it was like one of those dogs where you'd go to their house and, and they'd have to like put it somewhere else because it was, it, it would get a little uh, rambunctious. Sure. And it was always like, you know, be careful, it might bite you. What kind of dog was this? Um, an Australian Shepherd or something like mm-hmm, that. Okay. And so one day, and it was always nice to me, but one day I was sitting on the floor watching TV with my friend and um, he came up behind me and grabbed my shoulder. And um, uh, it, uh, yes, I had to go to the hospital. Wait, he just walked up to you. <laughs> well, I had my, this is what, I, I don't know who came up with this theory, but um, <laughs> my, I had my hair up in a different way than oh, I usually yeah, had it. That's it. And um, I think maybe he didn't, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. <laughs> and he went, <laughs> that's he went, dumb. that's not right. <laughs> and so he tried to get me, he tried to get me away from that hairdo. Get away. Oh, he was trying to drag you away from your own hair. Yeah, and mm. I can't blame him. I mean, I'm sure it was a lot of butterfly clips and stuff. Sure, but he punctured the skin. Oh, yes. And then that whole summer I had to wear, um, uh, like, when I had my bathing suit on, I had to wear, like, a wetsuit over it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, you know. But, hey, I, I, I you know, I, I don't know what else to say. What was that dog's name? Um, um, hold on a second. Oh, so. Oh, so okay. And I feel, and and it was a nice dog, and and I'm sorry that it happened. But probably dead by now. Well, they gave it away afterwards. Ooh. <laughs> I was told it went to live on a farm. Maybe. Sure. Uh, Gary, any dogs? Uh, yes, I, I I don't have one now, but I have been bitten by a dog as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I f- I feel great about it. Yeah. You feel like it was fair? Well, I was stopping two dogs <laughs> from fighting by putting my hand in between them. Right. Like right where their mouths are? Where their mouths <laughs> sure. are. Sure. And uh, by the way, on a dog, uh, you know this because I'm a scientist, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> but a do- the bitey part of a dog is at the mouth. There. It's right there. It's yeah. right near there. And did you get bitten by both dogs? Just one. Just the one. One. Snoopy was that dog's name. <laughs> my cousin's dog, Snoopy. Oh. Can we talk about this? Because I... I Realized late in life that uh, Snoopy from Peanuts mm-hmm. is a cat. Is Maria, <laughs> she's not even trying to help you. She's trying to hurt you. Snoopy is <laughs> Snoopy is supposed to be a beagle, right? Yeah. But then you look at beagles and you're like, it's Snoopy a don't terrible like that, job. It's mm-hmm. a bad That's drawing. A drawing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a great point, Paul. Thank you. Ego <laughs> dog history. Um, I felt. Roxanne was my spirit animal as she was speaking. Um, white people kissing their dogs. I'll never sure, yeah, get it. Yeah. Also, them thinking everyone's got to love their dog. So, like, if she were to be like, I don't want to meet your dog. And they're mm-hmm. like, trust me, this one's friendly. You'll it's like, like dude, relax. Everyone doesn't have to like your dog. Why are you trying to convince me? It's very true. Um, but also, <laughs> I had a, I think I'm scarred because of a weird thing. My roommate, my sophomore year of college, um, I think this made me not like dogs. I was talking shit 
uh, about like wanting a dog. I was watching Run's house, and Vanessa and Angela had a dog. I was like, I want a dog, that cute little dog. And my roommate bought me a dog for my birthday. What? True story. Oh. True story. I couldn't make this uh-uh. up. Uh-uh. She bought me. We lived in the dorms, by the way. <laughs> so that which is that's not allowed at all, right? No. What kind of dog? A teacup Maltese. Oh, wow. yes. Yes, a teacup Maltese. Uh, a white roommate? No, she was <laughs> Jamaican, and that doesn't mean she's not white, but no, she was a, a coolie, Indi- West Indian black girl. <laughs> Bought me a teacup Maltese for my birthday, uh, my 20th birthday, and I didn't, I couldn't have this dog. I was a biology major. No. I couldn't take care of it. Also, we were not allowed to have dogs. No, not at all. Um, and she and I were like not that cool at that point either, so it was all very. So basically, I, I, I was like, hey, after I tried to keep the dog because it was a surprise, but someone ruined the surprise like a week before my birthday. I was like, so did you get your dog yet? And I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I received the dog and pretended it was a surprise. And then a month later, I was like, hey, I really can't keep this dog. So then sh- they got rid of it. Um, they put it down the garbage chute? They went to live on a farm. Oh, no. Um, I, no, 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 no. It, our friend's mom took it or whatever. And ever since then, I've been very like, I don't like dogs. Because she was like, you said you wanted one. <laughs> so you're guarding against people giving you dogs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically. You're putting it out there. I don't like them. I don't, I'm always, I'm just Please like, I don't, don't like give them me a dog. Because I don't want, I don't want anyone to give me a dog one day and be like, you said that you liked them. You just you ain't want- had the right person you need the right kind of dog. <laughs> I'm going to get you a dog before, uh, hey, Paul, before this show is over, I'm getting her a dog. How is that going to work? Don't worry about it. Okay. I'm getting you a dog. Please. I was, I'm, I like dogs, don't have a dog, don't need a dog. Um, but I will say a, a, another thing that bothers me about dog culture is, especially here in Los Angeles, People bring their dogs everywhere, mm-hmm. yeah. everywhere. And the the assumption it seems to be is, isn't this great that I brought my dog here? <laughs> yes. And it's like, no, this is a restaurant. No. Yeah. So, yeah, I think here. the answer just really, I, to be for, perfectly clear, <laughs> dogs never did anything to me. But I think dog owners sometimes are just a little much. And, and thus, I've taken it out on dogs. And just to protect reason. black people, I actually like dogs, but would not go for one kissing me in the mouth. <laughs> but I do enjoy a dog. And as... A white woman. Sure. Yes. I have a dog, and I don't let the dog kiss me on the mouth. Oh, okay. Hmm. So, Progress is being made. Yeah, wow. it's you know when we can talk about the differences. Exactly. All we need to do is talk, talk about, about it. Talk about it. Yeah. And I'm talk got, about yes. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> that's gonna do it for this episode. <laughs> We're <laughs> not gonna do the improv because <laughs> this is more important. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take a break. During the break, we will procure a location for improv from our guest, Roxanne Gay, and then we'll reveal that improv location, and then we're going to do that improv. All this and nothing else when Spontaneous Nation returns. Hey, guys, we will get back to the action in just one moment, but I want to remind you, Work Juice Improv, with many of your favorites from the Thrilling Adventure Hour and this here podcast, is Wednesday, July 25th, at Dynasty Typewriter in downtown Los Angeles in Koreatown. Koreatown, Los Angeles, border, let's say. I don't know. Um, And then the Detroit Improv Festival. I'm so excited to be bringing back Spontaneous Nation on Thursday, August 9th. Two shows, 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eugene Cordero, Tony Newsom, Little Janet Varney, and special guests to be revealed. And then the very next night um, on uh, Friday, August 10th, uh, Paul F. Tompkins and friends, Eugene Cordero, Tony Newsom, Mark Evan Jackson, Jamie Moyer. These are going to be fun shows, just straight up old improv. We're going to be having a good time. Again, two shows, 7 and 10. And don't forget the London Podcast Festival, Super Ego September 14th, Spontaneous Nation Live September 15th. All tickets are available at paulftompkins.com slash live. Go there, get them, goodbye! Oh, folks. I'm sorry to tell you, but that story about Ego's college roommate, it got a little juicy. (laughs) You'll never know, and I apologize. Well, folks... It is that time. It is time to reveal the location for our improv provided to us by our guest, Roxanne Gay. But first, just so as you know, in order to aid us in our storytelling, we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time. Let's say we're in a scene. We need to find out something that happened in the past. Someone's having a memory. We're learning how something came to be. Anytime we travel into the past, we use this flashback sound effect. Okay, well, let's say we want to get back to where we were. Anytime we travel into the future, we use this flash forward sound effect. 
Now this last sound moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene. We want to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. We use this meanwhile sound effect. Past. Present. Future. Everyone gets it. And any of our improvisers may press the buttons at any time. And now it is time to reveal the location for our improv provided to us by our guest Roxanne Gay. And that location is... Filthy Public Bathroom. Filthy Public Bathroom. We take you now to Filthy Public Bathroom. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. What, what are you doing in here? I came in here to wash my hands, but as you can see, they both extremely nasty. So if you could turn on the warm water for me, I would truly appreciate what, what, it. What are you, what are you doing? Ma'am, in my right hand pocket is a $50 bill. I well, you lock- can have it if you would just turn on the warm water for me, ma'am. I'm okay. I don't. Please. Fine. Yeah. Well, I don't. Can I? Do I then reach in your pocket and get the fifty dollar bill? It's okay. in my right hand pocket. That's my left. You reach okay, in at okay. my left. Okay. Okay. I'm just a little shaken up right now because I, I, I thought I locked the door behind me. Oh, you me. did. Yeah. You did. Okay. okay. <laughs> what? Who are you? I'm just a man with bathroom keys and nasty hands, ma'am. I'm <laughs> so you work no at the harm. park here. You work I'm, at the park. In uh, a way. In a way. All right. You know what? Here, I'm gonna get out. Can, uh, the fifty dollars. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Just turn on the warm water. I, it's okay. It's on. Who do you want more? Cold. No, that oh is my fine. Gosh. Okay. Ma'am. Oh, my. Yeah. Could I trouble you to hand me just a glob of soap? Uh, I'm supposed to then hand you the soap. Can yeah. you just put your hand under the dispenser and I'm going to push the button for that you? That sounds fair to me, ma'am. Okay. Okay. This is not the agreement. You said just the water and I could have the $50, but here. Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. You, you, you. What are you, why are you, what are you doing? Why are you in here? Ma'am, honestly. Yes. Sometimes we shouldn't ask questions. You've helped a stranger today, and that is going to help you later on. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, sir. Thank Thank you. you for this $50. Have a good... What happened in there? Well, I made $50. Um, What? Yeah, I made $50. Uh, I don't... It, it seems like a divine moment because I, I I'd just been praying this morning about being able to uh, um, afford the parking ticket I got last week. So I don't know if this was an angel or, or I don't know what he was. I don't. Wait, okay. wait, wait, Lorraine. I'm sorry, Tom. No. You're new here. It, yeah. You know who this sounds like, Tom? This sounds like that oh, guy. Yes. That, um, what's his name? Um, Jasper Teen. Jasper Teen. Yeah. Uh, listen to Lorraine. Yeah. yeah. He has been coming around this park for the last 15, 15 years. years. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay. He has been coming around the park the last 15 years giving people. Can, can we see that $50 bill, please? Yeah, here. Okay. Okay, look. Did it, you look closely at it? Yeah. Well, it's, well okay, the face is, yeah. Yeah, the face. Yeah. Who does that look like? Uh, looks that's like Tracy Morgan. Yes, yes, that is funny. That's funny money. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a that's a gag gift. Okay. Okay. He did the same thing to me with a scratcher ticket. I thought I won fifty thousand dollars for a whole Tuesday. I went around thinking I had won fifty thousand yeah. dollars. To my surprise, I didn't. Oh. And I'll tell you what, my husband was nonplussed. Nonplussed. Oh gosh. I can't okay. believe he's back. He hasn't been around. Uh, uh, Tom, I don't. Do we call the authorities? I mean, he is. Uh, uh, he's, I, I'm gonna go back. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. No, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Lorraine, don't I, I'm do it. I'm gonna go. Bitch, bitch, let her do he it. He is dangerous. I, I'm gonna. Go. Is he? We wait, now. Hold on a second. To the best of our knowledge, he's never caused anyone physical harm. He's just made them wildly uncomfortable and given them fake money. Yes, but as the park, as recreation, uh, what, 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 what officers, officers, we're recreation sorry, officers. As recreation officers, it is our duty to save the public from from people passing around funny money I, and and fake scratchers but and I, saying and, and making them believe he's some sort of angel. I know. I'm saying, but I'm saying the best way to catch him is let Lorraine go back in there. Now she's ready. 
She knows who he is. Maybe you should go in there with her. Tom, you're j- you, uh, Lorraine. Yeah. You're new here. Yeah. Tom used to be an undercover cop. Okay. okay. I used to be an undercover cop, okay. but I, the He's, stress got to me. The stress got to him, and now every chance he gets, right, Tom? Yeah. Every chance you get, you got to do a sting. Like, well, look. Okay. I I I moved to this town and wanted to meet my neighbors and get to know my neighbors, and you guys have been so lovely oh, about that. Oh, that's sweet okay? of you, Lorraine. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, you guys Thank have you. been so lovely about that, but. I know what I saw, and I know what I know, and I know right now th- th- this money has Tracy Morgan's face it's on funny it. Money, yeah. it. It's it's fine. It's I don't. It's not making me laugh, so I wouldn't call it funny. <laughs> well, money. a lot of I, well, funny yes. also means strange. So okay, mm-hmm. okay, unusual then for me. I that's don't put words into All my right. mouth. Um, I, I I know what I experienced. Okay, and I think he came to tell me something. He must have been there to tell me something. Uh, this. Midge, can I say, yes. this sounds different than everyone else's experience. Uh, I, I, listen, I've, if you want to go back in there, you want to get to the bottom of it, I mean, that's fine. But I'm not taking, I'm not going to the higher ups with this, okay? I'm not taking the blame. I'm not taking the fall. Well, I agree with you there, Midge. I think we keep this among ourselves. Okay. And the, our supervisors don't need to know about this. don't this, need to know. Okay. Because uh, I'm going to tell you. So-, <sighs> so, boss, I have something to tell you. Um, yeah, well, what is it? There is a man at the park. I, I'm not supposed to tell you this. Um, uh, Mitch uh, 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 has asked me not to say a word, but there's a man at the park um, handing out money that is unusual. Mm. Um, and and I think that he may be a divine being, um, but also maybe not. But I just wanted to make you aware. You please don't tell anyone that I told you this. Lorraine, they, it's good you brought this to me. Okay. And I'm going to tell you something that I... I haven't told Midge. I haven't told Tom. Okay. That man that you saw. Yeah. He is an angel. Oh my God, I knew it. But but not from heaven. Well, from where then? He's a hell angel. That's a demon. Well, they're very particular about their their names. Demons are apparently a separate thing. Okay. This guy is insistent that he is a hell angel. Okay. And do you know why he came to do? Like, what is it? What's his deal? His mission seems unclear. So far, what he's done is just vex a bunch of people by g- giving them fake money or funny money, if you will. Uh, he gives them uh, phony scratchers or funny scratchers, <laughs> if you will. Uh, they all seem to be based in currency. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one time he gave someone a, a treasure chest that was filled with uh, chocolate coins, uh, funny coins, if you will. Yeah, yeah okay. So I, I don't know what I he's doing. Other, please don't. <laughs> I won't. I won't. I, you asked if I will. I won't. I, uh, unusual. Thank you for answering. I don't know that any of those things are comical. I understand. Well, the funny also means strange. strange. I've, but I've heard that, but I don't buy it. Jasper Teen, how did it go down oh, on Earth? Lord have mercy. I, I have given so many people so many forms of currency. They're funny to me, Jasper Teen. They're funny to me. And you know what? I have a gold doubloon in my left hip pocket with a picture of Marty Feldman on it. <laughs> and I gave it to a young lady the other day. And my God, my God... My God. Don't say that name here. Oh, don't be such a ninny penny. Why Jasper Team why Jasper Team can say he's he's he, 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 he that's his humor. It's not it's fine. It's fine. Guys, I could stay here and fight all day, but I gotta get back to that filthy bathroom. What are, are you so... gonna do down there, Jasper well, Teen? You, oh, you you just look in the globe of vision and you'll mm-hmm. see what I'm on doing. I hope our highness watches. I'm sure he'll be very happy with whatever angel you procure. So here's what I need you to do, Lorraine. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad you brought this to me because I need you to go back into that bathroom. Okay. And we'll try to snare him. Okay. And then, if we're lucky, hell will now be beholden to us, uh, and we'll do our bidding. I'm assuming it's uh, genie laws. Okay. Apply here. Okay. okay. So, so uh, you want me? You want me to be, make him one of us? Is that my understanding? This well, right? we'll, I don't we'll, know. we'll, 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 Lorraine, 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 everything's so fine. A lot of responsibility. Everything's fine. I know. I know, Lorraine. Lorraine, I, I'm really okay. counting on you okay. here. Ever since you came to this town, everyone just, we just think the world of you and we we believe in you. Okay. Okay? Hey, there's a new girl, Lorraine, moving into town today, guys. Sounds good. I can't wait to meet her. Me too. Hey, there she comes right now. Oh, look at her. 
Trish. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Well, Welcome to town. Thank you what so much. What a nice much. smile you've got. Oh, thank you. I use Crest White Strips. Ooh. Hey, Crest White Strips. I Those figured that like, out because yeah. I used to be a cop. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, I'm glad well, you're here in town. Oh, so good to meet you guys. What are your names? I'm Hank. Hank. I'm Mitch. Mitch. I'm Tom. Tom. Hank, Mitch, and Tom. Hey, I'm are you looking for a job? Yeah. Well, here at the park, we're ready to have you. Well, what, what would I be doing? This sounds fantastic. I mean, just park stuff, you know, like tell okay. people to pick up their litter. Okay. Hours and such. I have a kid. Uh, oh. It's oh, you have a, daylight oh. to sundown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing I, I, past 10, 8, 10. Uh, so, Tom, help me out with this. Nothing I past 10, 10 p.m. PM. Guys, I'll before. see you guys later. I got to go try to make some snow with Aunt Jemima candies. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, hey. but that's what I'm going to do. Make snow with Aunt Jemima candies. Hank, what are the steps involved? <laughs> I don't know. Bye. <laughs> Okay, hi. I'm happy to see you here in the bathroom again. Um, hey, how you doing? I, um, I'm sorry, have we met before? Yes, you gave me um some funny money, Tracy Morgan. Was I you. assure you, ma'am, you're mistaking me for someone else. No, it was you. I don't think all black people look alike. <laughs> Not me. No. Hmm. Um, you, uh, yeah, you you gave me money with um Tracy Morgan's face on it. Um, that seems highly unlikely, but... Would you be so kind to hand me a s- one square of toilet paper? He's in there now. I can hear it. What? Yes. Oh, my God. I, I thought that was just the, the that pipe that we didn't get fixed. I thought that was that pipe that we didn't get fixed. You thought the pipe sounds like somebody talking? I didn't know, Tom. Mitch? My God. It's on me. It's on me. Mitch, I'm Mitch, the one Mitch. that made him come to the Mitch, bathroom. Mitch, what? I think that this Lorraine is going to try to trap him. What do you? Why would you? Well, okay, listen, Tom. I didn't want to. I didn't want to m- make you fear anything that's happening. But I had a something came to me in a dream last night. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hello, Mitch. Who's there? I have a message for you. What kind of message? A secret message. Well, I. 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 I okay. The message is this. Tomorrow, the bathroom visitor will return. Who says this? Who speaks to me? Me. Yes, I know. Show yourself. Well, I do I have to? Yes, show yourself. Uh, Here, put on a coat. Here. Ta-da. Ooh, I like the coat. Oh, thank you. But your face, it's terrifying. That's right. I'm from hell. <gasps> hell. Hell. Was just scared out of my mind. <coughs> oh, bless you, Tom. I'm allergic to your story, I think. Okay, very funny. No, but- I, I think there are certain stories that I have a problem with. I haven't had myself checked out. I'm just waiting to ride it out. Oh, Tom, you are you are full of it. Now listen to me. This dream I had last <coughs> night really scared the pants off of me. Literally, I woke up with no pants. But you went to bed with pants on? I can't be sure. Anyway. I have a fear that she might, I don't know, guess. Now, as I said, just hand me one square of toilet paper. My my hands are filthy. I, I can't cut it off myself. I just locked the door, and you're not going anywhere. Okay? I have no intention of going anywhere, ma'am. Okay, good. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry, yeah. Here. If you will hand me that square of toilet paper, I have a rebel yeah. coin in my pocket. A rebel? Lorraine, don't open the door, Lorraine. Just open the door. I'm sorry, my, my friends. I'm, 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 Lorraine. Okay, I'm going to open the door. Yes. What do you guys want? Okay, stop right there, Tom. Do your police thing. All right, buddy. <laughs> what do you think you're doing in here? This is the ladies' room. Tom? Y- yeah, my name's Tom. That's you, Tom. How, how do you know my name? You were an undercover policeman, weren't you? Yes, I was. Many years ago, Tom? Yes, many years ago now. When one of your undercover assignments went wrong, Tom? 
Yeah, I got the money. You can't get the money. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You can't get any money off of us. Yeah. No, 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 no. Wait, guys. Oh, uh, what? What? Yeah, so uh, well, let's stick around and uh, and uh, you know everything's gonna be uh, everything's gonna be cool. I don't we'll just, know. We don't just wait trust here for another you. five minutes. We don't trust you. Why don't you trust man? me? I'm one of the gang. No, no, no. What? you're not one of the gang. I'm dressed just like you guys. No, you're you got a coochie yeah, cutters. You're you're wearing a Stussy shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, right? Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> not that undercover assignment, Tom. The other one that went wrong. Hey, dog, who the fuck are you? Uh, you know, your friend. N- nah, you, what's my name? Uh, what's my name? What's my name? Cher- what's my name? Cheryl. S- Cheryl? Nah, man. <laughs> Nah, fuck this, man. Why did you say Cheryl? Oh, I don't. Oh, I. Cheryl. I don't. I. I don't. My name know. is Gerald. Ger- oh, oh, oh yeah. sorry, I heard it I've, wrong. Then. I have bad hearing. Yeah. I oh. never met y'all before. You can't say you my friends, and I never met y'all before. Ah, uh, I've been shot. Oh boy. It's your fault, Tom. <laughs> it's your fault, Tom. It was your fault, Tom. No, I know. Everyone told me. It was your fault, Tom. And then that, my partner went in the grave. Yeah. Seemed like everyone got a turn in the grave. I'm so went- allergic to this. Tom, stop, please. I'm Your sorry, partner went in the grave, Tom. Look at me. Do I not remind you of your partner, Tom? You look... Look at no, me, Tom. Don't I remind you of your partner, But you're da 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 I'm da 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 right here. You're dead because of me. That's right, Tom. Don't you feel bad? Of course I do. Well, don't you feel really bad? Yeah, I admitted guilt. Okay, I've been asked to keep him in here, okay? By who? Please, Tom and Mitch, um, um... By who have you been asked to keep him in? This is Midge. I know I sound a uh, yeah, lot like I know. his old Yeah, partner. okay, but, but no, um... No. You didn't go to the higher-ups, did you? Lorraine, you didn't go to the higher-ups. No, I... I, I uh. Oh, boy, that's not going well at all. No, oh, she shouldn't have come to the higher-ups, yeah, I reckon. I thought she could handle this. She was new in town. Yeah, I mean, everybody loved her. Remember the first day she arrived? I do, I do. <laughs> that welcome wagon was laid out for that one. Yeah, well, I don't know. What do you think? Just I, let the demon take them? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hell angel. A hell angel, right? They uh, go by that name. You know what? I got a feeling this kid's plucky. She can get out of this herself. You think you can pull it out? I, I no, I I didn't I I, I, I just, I, I talked to him about something. Wow, wow. No, but not wow. this thing. I didn't well, say it was this wow. thing. Uh, sir. Guys, I'm afraid I have to leave this uh, no, no. general c- c- area. C- c- no, no. She locked the door? No. She no. locked the door and she made the sound with her mouth at the same time. Just so you knew I meant business. You're uh-huh. not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You are going to stop terrorizing this town. Or oh, What? They didn't say or what. They didn't tell me. They just told, told me to get you in. I don't. What? Could you yeah, give me you, one second to go talk to my boss? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Hey, hey, Lorraine. Yeah. What are you doing okay. here? So he, I've got him. I've got him in the public bathroom. He wants to know. Is the door what locked? The, um, I asked. I asked Tom and Mitch to lock it behind me. Oh so uh, supposedly, yes, we can assume yes. What's going to happen if he doesn't stay? What's going to happen? What, what? 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 What do we hold over his head? <sighs> oh, okay. Um, well, he's talking. She's talking about the hell's angel. Yeah. Is he? <laughs> Um, I guess. Could you pass me my inhaler? Oh, is this it over here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why do you? Why am I? <gasps> okay. Better. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Okay. Hmm. What? I've noticed an influx of allergies since that hell angel has been in town. You think he's causing these? I uh, think he's allergies? causing an influx of allergies. I got an idea, Lorraine. Mm-hmm. Here, here's some Claritin D. That's the okay. one with the decongestant. What does the Take D it stand if you got high blood pressure. Okay. Decongestant, I okay. thought it meant dogs and I was going to flip out. Why? You thought it meant claret and dogs? I don't know. Did you Doesn't think it was four dogs? Four dogs. I don't know. Okay. Well, I as, as we said in my neighborhood, well, lick me on the lips. I'm a white woman. Oh, <laughs> Anyways, okay. if, I'm, if what I think is happening is happening, <clears throat> this hell angel... It's probably just a walking allergy. He's just a collection of, of allergies. allergies. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. I don't think you are. 
And this, I have to tell you guys, yeah. he, it seems like he's also Tom's former partner. So he came back as a combination of walking allergies. Do mm. you think that was just a hell angel trick? Maybe. Maybe. Either way. Okay. Find some way to slip this allergy into his mouth, this allergy pill, this Claritin D. D. Um, D. Okay. Hold, D his, hold his mouth closed and then okay. like rub his throat so it goes down. Okay. Like you were a dog. Okay. Oh, yeah, like okay. it was a dog. Okay. Right, good luck. <laughs> <sighs> Welcome back, yeah. Lorraine. Gosh, you were gone for long enough. Yeah, boy. Trust me. Boy. It's for the greater good. <coughs> wow, we were just talking about what movies he'd seen. Jasper Teen said he, he really liked Call Me By Your Name. I like Call Me By My Name. His name's Jasper Teen, by the way. I even know. Oh, Jasper Teen. <coughs> okay. Guys, I must be going, I'm afraid. Oh, you're no, not no. going anywhere. <coughs> no. Oh, she did that thing with her mouth. That's right. Head. The door Me is locked. Business. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jasper Teen. Yeah. Can I touch your nose? Touch my nose. No woman's ever asked, asked me to touch, touch my nose. Oh, it's very before. erotic. Yeah. Uh, Tom, back me up on this, but it's a. It's oh a no, I, I, I fully very erotic. erotic. I am fully erect. Cat's right got now, your you nose. Ah, oh, ah, ah. What are you doing, what, Lorraine? What's going on, Lorraine? What are you doing? <laughs> what? What? What's, 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 what's happening to him? Oh my gosh, it's like. He's like, Dust and trees well, are don't coming move off of him. To the beat of just one drum. Uh, uh, he's for some reason he's singing the different uh, strokes uh, thing. Uh, he's, he's, he's like breaking out of the window. Oh my god! He's like breaking apart like those those old commercials for Contact, where the, the pill would be open and all the little the little balls would come out. Oh my god! He's he's just a pile of dust. I did it. I did I. I saved this town. Saved everyone. <laughs> I, I, I don't... Oh, open the door. Hey, open the door. <coughs> uh, Lorraine, we were watching on the closed circuit monitor. Uh, it's a good monitor, Lorraine. It's a great monitor. Yeah, Flat yeah. screen. But what oh. about my work? But what about my work? The monitor's cool and all, but what about my work? Lorraine, you've saved this town. Uh, all your, seven of us. Your honor, I'd I'd love to <laughs> I'd love to just say that I think Lorraine's been very brave today, and I'd like to say that maybe she should be promoted to main park operative. Well okay. said, Midge. You mean the MPO? You really think she deserves to be the MPO? Your Honor, I think she more than deserves it. I I think she she embodies every aspect of it. Oh, Lorraine. In my pocket is a medal for Wait the MPO. Wait, Wait a, a minute. minute. And in my pocket, you'll find a, a name tag that you can wear now that says you're the MPO. And in my what? pocket, you'll find all the gold in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and in my pocket, uh, I don't have a thing. Could I offer you each a Claritin D? <laughs> <laughs> And it all happened in a place called Spontanea Nation. Blessuch! Yes. What do you want to tell people about? Um. Well, uh, listen to Amanda London, my podcast, the big one. That's right. Very funny podcast. Uh, find it on iTunes. And um, uh, Drunk History, I think, is back. Oh, is it back already? I think so. Can't wait. Comedy Central. Maria, I love you on that show. Thank you. I think you're so funny on that show, and I've said this before. Maria has a weird ability to pull off... Any of the looks, the one I, I no, found I questionable was Sally Ride. I know, but I thought I know you didn't like that one. But let me tell you, I've never felt more comfortable in that in that very uh, uh, sculpted uh, <laughs> curly wig. That's right. It was just it was like a, a wax wig. It That's didn't right. move, and then just high waisted jeans, and I just felt really. I good. think it was more the performance that you were. So, it was such a twitchy performance. I walked around with my hands on my <laughs> on my uh, hips the entire day. Sure. That's for sure. Why wouldn't you? I felt good. Thank Jack you. Blazuch on the DH. Gary Anthony Williams. Oh, uh, soon the black version has a new podcast, and by this time when this airs, I bet very excited. Up a new soap opera. It's a bu- a black soap opera. Oh, and, this is fantastic. Yeah, and I'm looking for whistling work if anybody out there needs I know. La- get, look, Gary is always looking for whistling work. <laughs> if you know anybody that needs a whistler, listen to that. That's great. Did a bird just get in the studio? No. No. It's that, Gary Anthony That's my mouth. Um, do you, is there a name for the podcast? Uh, we're changing the name right now. <laughs> 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 it used to be the Hills of Baldwin, but there's some legal issues with it. <laughs> really? So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what are the legal issues? Uh, there's some other show called Baldwin Hills. <sighs> yeah. 
BET. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a reality show about mm-hmm. yeah. young rich and, black people. And so but now we can't this, use the hills. But this of, is a spoof. We know. It's a spoof. Yeah, they won't let us. <sighs> but it should be out and up and running, and we should all be very rich. And I imagine this will be <laughs> this will be an improvised program. It's an improvised African American soap opera that and takes on, place in Baldwin. And Hills. a continuing story will go cons- on. And a continuing story. I can't wait to hear this. Neither can I. There we go. <laughs> so check it out in the usual podcast places. Ego Wodem, what do you want to tell them about? I haven't a podcast to plug. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet, but <laughs> soon and very soon I, I can only hope. Um, I'm doing my show... Uh, Probably not in July, but I might do it again in August. Well, all right. Uh, a great black women, and then there's me. A character show, and with a message uh, for everyone. Um, but For uh, everyone? For everyone, okay. even the whites. Wow. <laughs> yes, <laughs> everyone. And you'll be uh, doing this at uh, the UCB, UCB Theater? UCB Theater, but I'd much rather you follow me on social media. There we go. Then see your show? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is a bold plug. Like we've never had. We've never had. No, I mean, the truth before. is, the truth is, I'm gonna do this show one more time, and it's not in July. It's it's it happened already. Um, so uh, the last time happened already. Oh my god! Uh, well, there but you go. follow me on the gram at Eggy Boom. And follow me on the Twitter at Eggy underscore Boom. How do you is what spell I these things? Another I underscore, Paul. I hate go. the underscore, but we know the story of the underscore on this podcast. Someone else has the, the Eggy Boom. I have an underscore. One. Yeah. It's, it, does someone have the name you want? It's I, sad. I, I, I can't imagine they do, but I guess they did because yeah. I used the underscore. They must and have was taken. Yeah. See, so. Did you try your full name at first? I don't know what I did. I was at all of a, I'm, I blacked out. I can't remember. She was drunk. Well, she she was yeah. drunk when she did. So yours is M underscore Blasucci. Yeah. Gary, what's yours? I think I'm at Gary A. Williams. You're not or on the at Twitter Gary or... Anthony. I'm well, not you're, on the, you're on the gram. One's Gary Anthony Williams and one's Gary A. Williams. There you go. Twitter and gram. Figure it out, guys. Yeah. You'll, you'll get there. <laughs> Do the work. Eben Schletter. He is Eben Schletter on all the socials. Go to ebenschletter.com and see God Eben Schletter's non spontaneous nation work because Eben Schletter is only the best. How do you spell Eben Schletter? It's very simple. <laughs> E B A N S C H L E T T E R. As for me, go to paulftompkins.com slash live to see where I'm going to be. Spontaneous Nation Live returns to the Detroit Improv Festival, the Magic Bag Theater, Thursday, August 9th. We're very excited to be back. Eugene Cordero, Tony Newsom, and little Janet Varney with guests to be revealed. Um, and we're going to the London Podcast Festival. That's insane. That's fun. Wow. Going to be doing uh, Spontaneous Nation Live and Super Ego, so please do check that out. Uh, what else can I tell you? P.F. Tompkins and all the socials. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting the podcast. Thank you to Engineer Brett for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying Semper in Presenti.